Monergism is the view within Christian theology which holds that God works through the Holy Spirit to bring about the salvation of an individual through spiritual regeneration, regardless of the individual's cooperation. It is most often associated with Calvinism such as Presbyterianism and the Dutch Reformed Church and its doctrine of irresistible grace, and particularly with historical doctrinal differences between Calvinism and Arminianism. This position contrasts with Arminian synergism, the belief that God and individuals cooperate to bring individuals salvation. Topic. Statement of the doctrine Monergism states that the regeneration of an individual is the work of God through the Holy Spirit alone, as opposed to synergism, which, in its simplest form, argues that the human will cooperates with God's grace in order to be regenerated. To most synergists, regeneration is a process that begins when a man responds to God's initiative, repents, and begins the labor of loving God and his neighbor. Monergists believe that regeneration takes place as a single act in which God regenerates a man from his fleshly state and, thus now enabled, a man can believe, and that he inevitably and invariably will do so. While most synergists hold that God initiates all the work but that the work of salvation requires man's free will, monergists maintain that God alone initiates and completes all the work of salvation. To a monergist, a person does possess human freedom before regeneration if by freedom, is meant the ability to choose what one wants. Yet, a man, because of his unregenerate and fallen nature is in slavery to sin i.e. man chooses sin, because that is what he wants, because he is dead in his sin before God's regeneration and in this state he is unable to choose God because he does not want God, he may want the gifts from God, but not God. Synergists, on the other hand, have varying beliefs regarding man's freedom to respond to God. According to monergism, faith in Christ only springs from a heart first renewed by God. Among various arguments, proponents believe 1 Corinthians 12-3 to mean that no one can possibly confess Jesus as Lord apart from the Holy Spirit's prompting and being a true conviction of his heart. According to monergists, all men are conceived and born with an unregenerated human nature, and faith to believe is beyond the power of this unregenerated human nature. God circumcises the heart. The Apostle John is understood by some monergists as having recorded Jesus saying that we love darkness, hate the light and will not come into the light John chapter 3 verses 19, 20. Monergists assume that doing the truth and loving the light in consequence are the results of God's irresistible grace which brings a love and faith enabled by grace. The natural man, apart from the quickening work of the Holy Spirit, will not come to Christ on his own, since he is at enmity with God, and so, will not understand spiritual things meaning the experience of loving God, i.e. seeing God's loveliness 1 Cor 2 Reading or hearing the word of God alone cannot elicit saving faith in the reader 1 Thess 1 4, 5. The monergist believes in heralding the gospel indiscriminately, and the Holy Spirit regenerates whom he will, according to his sovereign grace. Monergists know that once the eyes have been made healthy, a person will inevitably follow God, because the infinite is effective to what the infinite wills to effect. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, 13 for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Philippians chapter 2 verses 12 to 13. God always does according to his good pleasure, and no thing can stop an infinite being's good pleasure. Topic. Monergistic salvation, synergistic damnation Lutheranism and some Baptists with Reformed or Covenant theology beliefs holds to the soteriological position of monergistic salvation and synergistic damnation, rejecting Calvin's monergistic damnation and Arminius' synergistic salvation. Lutheranism teaches that God predestines some to salvation via his foreknowledge but does not predestine others to damnation, as God wills that all might be saved. 1 Tim 2 to 3 minus 6, Rom 11:32, etc. The scriptural basis for man's justification by faith alone is some summarized in the epitome of the formula of concord under free will and the righteousness of faith, and fully discussed in the solid declaration of the formula of concord under free will and the righteousness of faith. Likewise the defense of the Augsburg Confession discusses the scriptural basis of man's justification. Reformed Baptists confess the London Baptist Confession of Faith of 1689. 
Lutherans thus confess that salvation is monergistic, saving faith being the work of the Holy Spirit alone while man is still the uncooperative enemy of God Rom. 5 to 8, 10, but man's damnation is synergistic. Scripture states repeatedly that man participates in and bears the responsibility for resisting God's grace of the free gift, not enforced gift, of salvation. X. Matt. 2337, Heb. 1225, Acts chapter 7, verse 51, John chapter 16, verse 9, Heb. 1215, etc. Thus, you will see Calvinists incorrectly accuse Lutherans of Arminianism and Arminians incorrectly accuse Lutherans of Calvinism. Lutherans view their stance not as having one foot in Calvinism and one foot in Arminianism, but having both feet firmly planted in Scripture. This view is also shared by some Augustinian denominations such as the Church of the Redeemer. Opposition to monergism Synergists have a variety of beliefs. Many would hold the same views listed above in describing how God opens the eyes and ears to a person to both see and hear the salvation of God before he has faith. They would make the distinction, however, that a man can reject this revelation and maintain his desire to remain as he is. They would maintain that God, in his grace, comes to all human beings to follow him, but he allows the free will of the individual to not respond to him. Some synergists believe that because man is made in the image and likeness of God, he has the ability to make free choices for good or for evil. Other synergists believe man is unable to do good but God has extended grace to all people which gives them the ability to have faith in Christ see prevenient grace. Synergists believe salvation is a matter of human and divine synergy, not divine choice alone without human cooperation. Synergists interpret biblical passages, such as the parable of the talents and the passage, If today you hear the voice of God, harden not your heart. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 15 Some synergists believe that monergism is fatalistic, because they interpret it to believe that a man is not free to resist God's outward call. Many monergists, however, would counter that when the heart has been regenerated, man accepts God's inward call freely and so would defend that their Christianity, while not predicated on free will, does, in fact, involve their freedom. Opponents of monergism would argue that this type of freedom is akin to being free to take the one and only choice available. But again, if freedom is simply the ability to do as we please, then, how that freedom is brought to pass is irrelevant. Moreover, if we are at enmity with God, we will never be pleased to love or have saving faith in God, as synergism states that we can. See Romans chapter 8 verses 6 to 8. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. These arguments are both aspects of the general argument that monergism means that God chooses individuals without any condition provided by the individual. See the you in Tulipie. Unconditional election. Therefore, according to monergism, the only reason that one person is saved and another is not is because God sovereignly decided, without any conditions provided by the two individuals, to save one of them. It follows that the only reason people are not saved is because God sovereignly chooses not to save some individuals. Therefore, monergism is said to lead to the conclusion that God does not in fact love every human being, as God's word declares. I also will laugh at your calamity, I will mock when your fear cometh, when your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer, they shall seek me early, but they shall not find me, for that they hated knowledge, and did not choose the fear of the Lord." Proverbs 1 verses 26-29. Nor want to save every person, as God's word declares. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay, of the same lump to make one vessel unto honour, and another unto dishonour? What if God, willing to show his wrath, and to make his power known, endured with much long-suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory?" 
Romans chapter 9 verses 18 to 23. By contrast, synergists maintain that God does not save certain individuals because they do not desire to be saved. According to both monergism and synergism, God will not force his will or his forgiveness on those who do not desire it. Opponents claim that there is no writing in church literature prior to Augustine which can be construed in a monergist way. Yet, the scriptures given above demonstrate that the church literature i.e. Holy Writ in the time of Jesus Christ and the Apostles could be interpreted to support monergism. However, this interpretation has not found favor with the Roman Catholic or Orthodox churches, which have remained firmly synergistic. Robin Phillips has argued that monergism and monoenergism, the latter of which was condemned as heretical during the patristic era, are closely related. References Sources Regeneration by J. I. Packer External links Monergism.com – contains articles explaining and defending Calvinistic monergism. A Divine and Supernatural Light – immediately imparted to the soul by the Spirit of God by Jonathan Edwards. Two Views of Regeneration chart by John Hendricks The Work of the Trinity in Monergism by John Hendricks Jesus Teaches Monergistic Regeneration by John Hendricks the New Genesis by R. C. Sproul A Defense of Monergistic Regeneration by Gannon Murphy Monergistic Regeneration 2-part MP3 lecture by Art Azurdia